So before we get started with this video, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. The first one is to let you all know that I've recently become much more involved with the Ultrasound Leadership Academy, or ULA. Now before I was just a professor, which is where we kind of did one-on-one -on -one hangouts with people, but now I'm actually part of the administrative team and I'm gonna be updating their lectures. Super excited about it. Here's the link, check it out if you wanna learn more. The other thing is to check out Ultrasound Podcast. One of the other podcasts I'm involved with, GE recently approached us and wanted to help out by getting some people that might not have been able to come to our conferences before to our conferences. Now to do that, you have to enter into this competition. Now this competition is something that I'm really excited about. What I want you to do is I want you to send your best ultrasound cases to the Ultrasound Podcast via email or Twitter or Instagram, however you want to contact us, and let us know you'll be entered in a drawing to get free admission to BenFest 2019 or CastleFest 2019. Looking forward to seeing what you all come up with. And now, on to the video. Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Sono, and here we are going to talk about the EFAS examination. The traditional FAST exam includes the evaluation of the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, and pelvis looking for hemoperitoneum and hemothorax, and looking at the pericardium for hemopericardium. The EFAS exam is all of those things and includes the evaluation of a pneumothorax. Now, as far as the probes, I usually use the curvilinear transducer for the whole thing, but you can use this one for the abdominal examination. Additionally, it's usually easier to see the heart with this, and you can use this one for the evaluation of a pneumothorax, although this one will get you views for all of the examination. With the right upper quadrant, there are three different places that you want to evaluate. The most important spot is the inferior pole of the kidney, caudal tip of the liver interface, followed by Morrison's pouch and followed by the suprahepatic area. So this is the first place that you want to evaluate. So you want to stick the probe right in the mid-axillary line and get this area right here. This is the inferior pole of the kidney. This is the caudal tip of the liver up here. And this area right here is where fluid is most likely to accumulate first. The next most common place for fluid to accumulate is the traditional Morrison's pouch view, which is in between the liver and the kidney. The third most common place is going to be suprahepatic. So you have to make sure that you look up here and look in between this white line, which is the diaphragm and this liver. Now, while you're here, go ahead and look for fluid in the thorax right here. And you should do that evaluation on both the left and right upper quadrant. So here's an example of a good view of the caudal tip of the liver and the inferior pole of the kidney. Fluid likes to accumulate right here. So make sure you get that view. So this is a very positive fast with the liver here, kidney down here, and a bunch of hypoechoic free fluid right here, basically all over the place. The next part of the exam is going to be looking at the pelvis. The probe needs to be placed just superior to the pubic symphysis with the probe marker facing up in the sagittal orientation. Now this is a male pelvis and this is the bladder. Now the peritoneum, remember, is up here. This right here, these are normal physiologic structures. This is the prostate and the seminal vesicle. So bladder is normal fluid and over here we have abnormal free fluid. This is fluid in the peritoneum. Very important to look for it up here and not down here because down here there's physiologic structures. This is a positive fast exam in a female patient, bladder, uterus, and behind the uterus in the pouch of Douglas, we see some hypoechoic free fluid here. Now with the left upper quadrant, there are also three different places you want to look. It's pretty similar to the right upper quadrant, but the place where fluid is more likely to accumulate is actually a little bit different. The most important spot to look at in the left upper quadrant is actually going to be supra-splenic. You want to look above here, above the spleen, between that white line and that spleen right there. That is where fluid likes to accumulate more commonly. You still want to look in more than just that place because remember, this is a 3D organ and fluid is going to accumulate wherever it happens to want to accumulate. So you still want to look between the kidney and the spleen over here. And then just like you would with the right upper quadrant, go ahead and look in that pericolic gutter down in this area where the inferior pole of the kidney is in the caudal tip of the spleen. So you want to look over here in this area as well to make sure that you have a thorough examination. So over here on the right side of the screen, we have a negative left upper quadrant fast. And over here, we have a spleen, we have a kidney down here and a bunch of free fluid up here. This is what a positive left upper quadrant fast looks like. Now let's talk about what to do when you want to go into the thorax. For this, we're usually going to do a sub xiphoid view of the heart. And what we're looking for is we're looking to evaluate for the presence of fluid around that heart. So here is a normal 
heart right here. So definitely no fluid, no rim of black around this heart. And I want you to compare that to this guy right here. So you see all of this black stuff around this heart. This is what a pericardial effusion looks like. And lastly, let's talk about how to look for a pneumothorax. And what you want to look for is this right here, rib, rib, this is the pleura. This is what you want to focus on. You want to know if that pleural line is sliding or if it's not sliding. Over here, we have great lung sliding, so this lateral movement here. And over here, we have basically the same exact image in a patient that has a pneumothorax. This white line is present, but it is not sliding laterally. It's not moving back and forth. This patient be highly suspicious for a pneumothorax. Now, this doesn't definitively rule in a pneumothorax. What you need to rule one in is you need something called a lung point. Now, what you're seeing with this lung point is you are seeing the limit of that pneumothorax. You're basically seeing where that pneumothorax starts. So the presence of lung sliding rules out a pneumothorax and the presence of a lung point rules one in. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Now, I know I kind of grazed over the hemothorax, hemopericardium, and pneumothorax sections, but I have separate videos talking about just those specific things. So check them out in the video section.